some of these cardiac toxicities that we encounter? Well, uh, most of the time it is what we call cardiomyopathy in the slide there. And it's produced by a direct toxic effect of the medication into the heart muscle and it weakens it. Uh, we need to mention, again, if we're going to concentrate a little bit on to breast cancer, right. uh, there are three medications used very commonly for breast cancer, for instance, called adriamycin being the, probably the most important one. And then we also have, um, depending on what the receptor type, you know, breast cancer therapy it depends on receptors that the breast tumor may have. And if the uh, cancer has HERS2 uh, receptors, then the appropriate therapy would be what Herceptin and uh, Pergetta, or Trastuzumab and Pertuzumab, those would be the generic names. And th those two also can produce uh, cardiotoxicity. And the important thing here is that in the field of cardio-oncology, not 100% every patient needs to be followed by a cardiologist. Okay. I had to underline that. Having said that, if you are a patient that uh, is at higher risk, for instance, you already have congestive heart failure to start with, or you have a small heart attack in the past, or you have you know, high blood pressure and diabetes, you're elderly, or you're going to receive many of these medications at the same time or in the same uh, therapy treatment overall, then you need to see a cardiologist. Then you should probably be seen by a cardiologist because then uh, the heart function is to be monitored very closely. Uh, with ultrasounds of the heart or echocardiograms. That's the preferred mode of follow-up uh, for cancer patients. Um, there are other modalities that really kind of not used anymore. We used to use um, radionuclide studies, you know, nu nuclear medicine studies to follow the heart function, but really echocardiography has you know, supplanted everything else and it's now the, way of the means of choice in terms of follow-up uh, of cardiac uh, cancer patients.